Good afternoon. Welcome to the 10th annual Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture as we come to you live from the Television Jamaica studios in Kingston, Jamaica. We're happy to have students and staff from the University of Technology, Jamaica, as well as members of the JMB family in studio with us. My name is George Davis, and I'm your moderator. The Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture is held each year as a tribute to transformational leader, the late Joan Duncan, the Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership at the University of Technology, Jamaica, which was named in her honor, partners with the JMB Foundation to bring you this lecture. That's the JMB June Duncan Foundation. The lectures focus on entrepreneurship, leadership, and ethics, and have all been very interesting and meaningful, the conversations that they bring. Today, we present another, what we hope to be exciting and widely appealing lecture as we focus on entrepreneurship in the entertainment industry in Jamaica. Our guest lecturer is Mr. Ibrahim I.B. Conte, CEO of I.B. Enterprises. Before the lecture though, we'll hear from the acting president of UTEC Jamaica, Professor Colin Giles, and also from the JMB Joan Duncan Foundation. Let's hear first from Professor Colin Giles. It is my pleasure to join in welcoming our viewers to the 10th annual Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture. UTEC Jamaica and the JMMB have enjoyed a long and productive relationship dating back over 20 years when the Joan Duncan Chair in Research and Finance was established at the University in the year 2000. This relationship was further strengthened when the School of Entrepreneurship at the University was renamed the Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship Ethics and Leadership, J.D. Seal, in 2011. The J.D. Seal is the first school of its kind in the English-speaking Caribbean to offer a specialized B.Sc. degree in entrepreneurship. The J.D. Seal continues to be impactful in carrying out its mission to prepare graduates who are well grounded in the principles and best practices of entrepreneurship, business ethics, and leadership. The JD Seal is also the first school of its kind in the English-speaking Caribbean to have an active business entrepreneurship incubator for startup technology-based businesses. Since 2014, this annual lecture has been impactful in honoring the memory of Joan Duncan's vision and passion for Jamaica's growth and development. The lecture has highlighted critical areas of national life and has focused on one or more aspects of the core disciplines of the JD Seal. We are happy to be collaborating with the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation in leading this very timely conversation. We hope that our viewers will find this discussion to be informative in shining a spotlight on how new and established entrepreneurs can create innovative businesses along the entertainment value chain. Do enjoy the presentation. Thank you, sir. That's Professor Colin Giles, acting president of UTEC Jamaica. This lecture is staged in partnership with the JMB June Duncan Foundation. We'll now have a look at a video which details the foundation's inspiration of love and how love shapes their mission to create a better future for all.
You are watching the 10th annual Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture, and today we focus on entrepreneurship in the entertainment industry in Jamaica. Ahead of our lecture, I invite you to take a look at the life and work of the trailblazer, the innovator herself, Joan Duncan. Um, very, very convoluted, very up, very down, very, it, my life has been a learning process. I have really come from really a very little or no understanding of life too. And, and continually growing, learning, learning every day about what I believe to it be the true meaning of life. The whole spiritual thing is a part that grows fast enough to learn to understand and accept them. So at that point in your life would you have, would you say that you were at a spiritual level close to what you are at now? No, but yesterday I was not a spiritual level close to what I'm at now. Everything is learning. It was a good experience, but I believe that every experience that comes to me is good. Regardless of what it is. Uh, regardless of what it is. I, that that, is, that's a hard comment to swallow. It, it, it's hard to accept for a lot of people. You will realize that. Well, I believe that everything that you are presented with in life, there is something that you are to learn from it. And once you learn something spiritual, you, have, you are better off. I had five beautiful children. I think that um, the whole process of growing up, process, the whole process of my life and in the intertwining of our life um, affected everybody in different ways, right? I had a daughter called Marina that committed suicide about two years ago, about five or six years ago. But after her suicide, I really had to deal with guilt. Did How did my drinking again? affect Marina? How did everything that I do? Your divorce. Divorce and, and separation. And I took full responsibility for this big woman's death. Yeah. I have learned so much from Marina, from her death, from learning to accept myself, from learning to overcome guilt, from learning to know that I am God's beautiful, precious child and from learning to separate me from the things that I do wrong. We say it is so important to look after our body, our physical body, our material needs, our house, our this, and we, look, we lose the most important thing, ourselves. The real us. No, it's real though, it's one day I woke up and I said, but then I am cursing God and look, God is blessing me. And I started looking into all the things good that had happened to me. And I started really recognizing the good things that had happened to me. And stop focusing on the bad. And stop focusing on the bad. And once I got to that state and started looking at the good things, and about 10 years ago, I changed my New Year's resolution, right? I take my New Year's resolution very seriously. Okay, well. I, yeah, that I am getting going to get closer to God. And it, I'm going closer same? every year is the same. It was the same for about seven years. I am going to get closer to God. I'm going to get closer to God. And I got into transcendental meditation, and I really and. You see, it's a, it's a path you go on, you know, it's, it's work, but it's good work. I, I really enjoy my work. I have fun. 
I really enjoy myself. I like doing what I'm doing. I like going out to make money. I like, I really like to do that, you know. Over, over to make money. I like interacting with people. I really love interacting with my staff. And, and, and we have a nurse upstairs for the staff children. And we have gym and a meditation room. And I like the feel of the place. When I walk into the place, I feel that I am just love and I just feel and all of it just happens. My, 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 my philosophy has always been, I, I grew, grew up with children, let me tell you something. I had a mother that grew me up on love. Right? Tough love, though, you know, but love. Right? And my philosophy has always been that love is the solution to everything. Has always been. That has not changed from as a young girl. Because I want to contribute to the good of every person that I meet. You're watching the 10th annual June Dunk Memorial Lecture. More after these. The shakers, the people making a difference, who never shy away from a challenge, who are never afraid to dirty their hands, to jump in and get things done, who are never afraid to fail, to take a risk, to learn. You know them and aspire to be like them. And you can, because there's always room for greatness. Apply today. University of Technology Jamaica, the birth. At the University of Technology Jamaica, knowledge is not only about what you put in, but also what you get out. The independence of thought, willingness to act, the determination to achieve excellence. Calling cards of the pioneers who are shaping our future through knowledge, through nation building, through community involvement, through individual empowerment. The University of Technology Jamaica, excellence through knowledge. My name is Shavina He. I'm pursuing a Bachelor in Engineering and I'm specializing in power in Electrical Engineering. My name is Leonard Williams, a graduate of Youth at Jamaica and I study Bachelors of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. A lot of lecturers are usually available at various hours of the day, you can always contact them. And the unity among our students is something that I always appreciate. If you're aiming to become a well-rounded individual, not only academically, but practically so that you can go and be fully aware when you're in the industry, you take it away too. started and baby started dying, I vowed to find a solution to help save lives. Zermasol is a smart, easy to use add-on device that can be added to almost any door handle or rail. We actually use a safe type of UV light to kill both bacteria and viruses that are harmful. The University of Technology Jamaica has assisted Zermasol immensely. Baroness Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, has also endorsed Zermasol to 54 Commonwealth membering countries. We have also been getting calls from other countries. The University of Technology Jamaica should definitely be the university of choice and is willing to see all its students succeed. The University of Technology Jamaica, the birthplace of greatness. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and... Welcome back. You're watching the 10th annual Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture. Special welcome to our studio audience, UTEC Jamaica students, members of the JMB family and other affiliates. To you, our viewers, we're happy you've joined us. 
This is the 10th annual John Duncan Memorial Lecture, and today we focus on entrepreneurship in the entertainment industry in Jamaica. Questions to ask, are there opportunities in this area currently? What are the challenges? How can we navigate those challenges? What range of innovative businesses can entrepreneurs develop along the entertainment value chain? I'm eager, you must be too, to hear these things discussed and more from our guest lecturer, Mr. Ibrahim I.B. Conte. He is the CEO of I.B. Enterprises. Mr. Conte, welcome to the 10th Annual John Duncan Lecture. We're anxious to get insight from you on this appealing topic. Good evening to our studio audience. Uh, members of the JMMB Foundation, the UTEC John Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership. It is my esteemed honor to be chosen as the guest speaker today. Today being Woolmer's Day, so Agriquada Gis <laughs> to all Woolmerians here and across the world. Uh, my name is Ibrahim I.B. Conte. I was born in Moscow, Russia. I was raised in Freetown, Sierra Leone until the age of eight years old when we escaped the civil war and we moved to neighboring Guinea Conakry as a refugee. And six months later, I moved to where I now call, where I've since then called home, Portmore, Jamaica, with my mother, Rosemary, and my father, Winston. I'm a father of two, seven-year-old Sierra and eight-year-old Zion. I'm an author, I'm a marketer, and I'm also an entrepreneur. I'm the owner of five event brands, that services five international markets in Jamaica, Atlanta, New York, Florida, Washington DC, and Toronto, Canada. My story. So my entrepreneurship journey started when I was a student council president at Wilma's Boys School, and someone came up with a brilliant idea of having a fundraising concert. Now at that point in time, no one on that committee had any experience attending any large um, concert or hosting or having any sort of experience uh, putting on a concert. But um, I've always had the belief that when there's a will, there's a way. And we figured it out. And the concert was a huge success. We raised funds um, that year to fund our activities. Um, but it was such a huge success. Um, the day of the concert, um, when the parents came to pick up their kids, we had it at Michael Auditorium. They were distraught seeing their 13 and 14 year old kids daggering um, at, at the auditorium. So Mr. Mary, our then principal said, no more. Um, please go back to um, the, the cake sale and so forth. No more concerts. Um, just being bit by the entrepreneurial bug, then we decided that you know we had to press on the following year. And you call it crazy, but we decided that we're going to save our lunch money, which was probably like $500, $600 at the time, and pool resources and have the event on our own. And we did. And, you know, I'll forever be grateful to my team of friends and, and that I had, at, at Jamie Roberts, uh, Mikel Lorne, and our whole team, and, and dancehall artist Idonia, just that support that we got. And that was where I got my start from. And, you know, I'm grateful to where I'm at today. Um, so we moved on from there, um, where I went to UE. I was a Guild CAC for two years, uh, where I can probably say totally revolutionized how events were done on campus in terms of Integration Thursdays, um, UE Carnival, and so forth. I started my own brand, such as Barcode, 1159, Strictly Addy, and in more recent years, Strictly 2K, um, where we recently joined VK Weekend, um, which is one of, if, one of the biggest weekend uh, event series in Jamaica. Afro Soka Jam, Badish, and now um, this year I started my own 360 events company where we offer bar service consignment and event cleanup. Now along that way, yes, you know, I've done well for myself, um, but there has been challenges um, or roadblocks along that way. One of them is the lack of organization and informality of the sector. So where you find that many players refuse to have their business registered or um, wouldn't want to trademark um, their brand. Or, you know, if, for example, you know, you're speaking to a supplier and say, okay, you know, before I send a deposit, you need to sign this contract. And it seems so foreign to them, like, contract for what, Bridging? <laughs> yeah, so um, additionally, of course, um, there is the roadblock of, you know, accessing loans or funding from financial institution. Um, Additionally, in terms of where systems are concerned. So 
take for example when you're having an event if you're applying for a permit um, the different municipality whether Kingston municipality or Portmore municipality St. Anne and so forth they have different requirements totally understandable because at the end of the day we have to ensure we put the patron safety um, and event security um, at our utmost um, our number one priority but because the systems are so different um, you may find yourself in trouble because you didn't know and the expectation is that how come you didn't know and no one will inform you and you have the different um, places that you'd have to pay such as be it jams, J caps and so forth. So because every municipality functions differently, every police division um, functions differently, a requirement for the, uh, um, a police division in downtown will be very different from the one in Half Tree or for, for the one let's say in Portmore. Um, one of the difficulties you find in this industry is sponsorship. If you're just starting out in this industry without having any uh, famous last name or any connection, you'll find that sponsorship will be very hard to find. Or even after establishing yourself for many years and you've built a reputable brand, you know, having you know, um, built great brand equity, and you know you have some of the biggest events um, in the country, you will still find it difficult to get sponsorship um, that is deserving of where your brand is if you don't have certain type of connections. And that's just a sad reality. And one of the, the last challenge I'll speak on is where the government is concerned. Um, I must say, you know, there has been efforts through the Ministry of Entertainment and Culture the last few years or the last few administration, um, but I don't think enough has been done. So there's still a lot more that the government can do to support the entertainment industry. Because when we consider the fact that Jamaica is the only country in the world that has created seven genres of music. So from my perspective, I believe we can agree that we are the cultural or music or entertainment mecca of the world. Um, we believe that the, the support that we've been getting from the government is good, but not good enough. Um, next, I will speak to opportunities. So ever since the COVID um, pandemic ended or during the pandemic, um, a lot more players in the industry have pivoted to digital space. So even recently when I was looking on my respective brands, I was looking on my marketing spend, and we've shifted roughly between 30 to 40% um, of our spend from traditional media to digital media. So what that says is that there's a lot of opportunities out there for entrepreneurs to enter the digital space. So that means if you're a social media manager or if you have those sort of skill sets, if you're a copywriter, if you're a video editor, if you're a graphic designer, please, you know, um, I mean, I don't think I need to say more. You know, there's a lot of opportunity there for you um, because you find out where everyone is on their phone, everyone is on digital media, um, the different event promoters, you know, everybody's trying to look different. You know, everybody's trying to come with something innovative. So if you are creative, you know, this is the time for you to enter, t to enter the entertainment space, especially where digital is concerned. Um, next is production. Um, I believe, I mean, I've been to events across the world, Europe, North America, um, in the Caribbean, and I can say Jamaica has some of the best production companies in the world, bar none. Um, you know, companies such as John Swaby, Phase 3 Production, Main Event, Clearson Production, and of course Starlight. Um, some of these companies, and speaking to um, a, a, a director, Kelvin from Clearson's, where he was letting me know that, because I was trying to get him for an event, and he was saying that he's actually going on tour um, with UB40, Lee, um, Leon Rhymes, and he's previously been on tour with Kes the Band, Buster Rhymes, and also Sean Paul. And initially I thought that, you know, that's really great. That's a great opportunity for, uh, for persons who are in production, so like say project managers and so forth. And that's where he let me know that in addition to um, employing Jamaicans who are project managers and going to Europe and those spaces, they're actually shipping um, sound equipment, generator, stage, and so forth. So anyone out there who is a project manager or if you're interested in going into project management or stage design, these are huge opportunities for you to enter the entertainment space um, via that avenue. There are also other opportunities through the Ministry of Education and Culture um, where, you know, a commendable effort for them last year when the pandemic ended, they offered grants if you were part of the entertainment um, registry. So um, I know 
uh, ministers Grange and, and Terry Long speak a lot about the entertainment in, um, registry. Um, my events are part of the entertainment registry, and I would implore any other um, entrepreneurs who are out there to be part of the registry because you will miss out on opportunities if you don't. Um, yes, you know, you may think that, boy, you're afraid of getting your business registered and so forth, but if you don't get your business registered, if you don't, um, you know, register your your brand and if you're not part of the entertainment registry and so forth you will miss out on opportunities you miss out on these grants for example chase funds offers grants um, and there are other opportunities as, as well for creatives they have internships for creatives the last thing i'll speak on as it relates to where opportunities are concerned is entertainment zones so i see i was reading recently their talks about having fort rocky um, having Fort Rocky and Sabina, Sabina Park and Jamwell as entertainment zone. So I believe, you know, those are great opportunities um, for us if we can get those going. Thank you. All right, so you're watching the 10th annual Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture, our guest lecturer, Ibrahim IB Conte, CEO of IB Enterprises. Solid start. The lecture continues right after this break. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. The shakers, the people making a difference, who never shy away from a challenge, who are never afraid to dirty their hands, to jump in and get things done, who are never afraid to fail, to take a risk, to learn. You know them and aspire to be like them. And you can, because there's always room for greatness. Apply today. University of Technology Jamaica, the birthplace of greatness. At the University of Technology Jamaica, knowledge is not only about what you put in, but also what you get out. The independence of thought, willingness to act, the determination to achieve excellence. Calling cards of the pioneers who are shaping our future through knowledge, through nation building, through community involvement, through individual empowerment. The University of Technology Jamaica, excellence through knowledge. My name is Shavina He. I'm pursuing a Bachelor in Engineering and I'm specializing in power in Electrical Engineering. My name is Leonard Williams, a graduate of Youth at Jamaica and I studied Bachelors of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. A lot of lecturers are usually available at various hours of the day, you can always contact them. And the unity among our students is something that I always appreciate. If you're aiming to become a well-rounded individual, not only academically, but practically so that you can go and be fully aware when you're in the industry, you take it away too. Germasol was first conceptualized a few years ago while I was volunteering at the hospital and hope break started and baby started dying. I vowed to find a solution to help save lives. Zermasol is a smart, easy-to-use add-on device that can be added to almost any door handle or rail. We actually use a safe type of UV light to kill both bacteria and viruses that are harmful. The University of Technology Jamaica has assisted Zermasol immensely. Baroness Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, has also endorsed Zermasol to 54 Commonwealth-membering countries. 
We have also been getting calls from other countries. The University of Technology Jamaica should definitely be the university of choice and is willing to see all its students succeed. The University of Technology Jamaica, the birthplace of greatness. Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards challenge for them for us to get our digital business going so we can trap the, that which is moving from the traditional space and then the second thing is a lot of entrepreneurs will tell you that some of the the, the best ideas that they rode into their full professional working life were spawned by virtue of the collaborative efforts of their friends in university. You heard him speak of the collaboration in high school and how at university that collaboration went to a different level and the seeds sown then in his time at the UWI have now borne fruit and continue to bear fruit for him as a full-fledged entrepreneur. I invite him to continue his presentation. Thank you. So um, this portion of um, the lecture, I just want to paint a picture of the entertainment industry. So when people think of the entertainment industry, um, people think, you know, party or speaker and jump up and down, etc. Um, but the entertainment industry is a multi-billion dollar industry that put food on the table for hundreds of Jamaicans, including myself. Um, last year, I took the plunge of leaving the comforts of my nine to five to go fully forward um, with um, my businesses, and it's the best risk I've ever taken. So when we think of an event, an event directly employs hundreds of Jamaicans at one point in, at one time. So let's say, for example, one event, a medium size or small size or large scale event, we're talking about the bartenders, we're talking about the security staff, um, we're talking about the entertainers, we're talking about the production companies, um, the vendors, whether the peanut vendors or the guys who are selling the gums and so forth, um, the jerk chicken or whatever food vendors. So those, person, those are the persons who are directly employed. And then when we look at the persons who are indirectly employed from one event, um, we, clothing stores, um, you know, the ladies, when they're going out, their face have to be beat. So we're talking about, you know, the um, makeup artists, the barber shops, you name it. Um, so, yeah, so these are indirect employment from the entertainment industry. But let me um, share some figures with you to paint just a better picture of the entire industry. Uh, so according to Minister Grange, the size of the industry contributes nearly 5% of total GDP and generates between 15 to 20 million USD in revenue each year. According to Scott Dunn of Dream Entertainment, Dream Weekend contributes roughly 4.3 billion Jamaican uh, dollars into the local Negril, Negril economy. SOMFES, um, between 5.6 billion, according to Minister Bartlett, Bartlett, to the local Montego Bay economy. VK Weekend, according to Supreme Team, contributes roughly 3.2 billion to the local cent and economy. Um, then let me just give you some quick stats on community bars, small lounges, round robins, etc. So community bars, three billion. Small lounges, 750 million. Round robins, 1.2 billion. So when you're looking at this, you're just seeing, oh, it's just a liquor round robin, but those liquor liquor round robin are contributing 1.2 billion Jamaican dollars to the economy. Um, small events, 3.5 billion. Medium size events, 2.5 billion. And large festivals um, contribute $21.5 billion um, annually to the economy. Now, um, I just want to speak a bit about my business model and how I go about in terms of the structure for my events. So I tend to generally look at what's the problem, you know, and generally um, my consumers, they're looking for fun, safe, affordable, uh, new experiences and inclusive space for them to enjoy themselves. And also a lot of events are similar to each other. So the solution to that 
would pretty much be to create brands or events that cater to their evolving needs, creating niche events that are safe, that are inclusive, that are consistent with what you deliver each time. Generally, my target audience are either between the age of 18 to 25 years old or 24 to 35 years old. Um, some of the costs, I just want to list some of the costs that are associated with having an event. So you're looking at fees. Um, depending on the size of the event, fees can cost anything from 200000 to 500000 if not more, um, from police fees and the various municipalities, insurance, jams, JCAP, um, you know, trust me, it adds up. <laughs> um, and then entertainment, of course, you know, your different DJs or, for example, um, shameless plug, Strictly 2K this Friday. Um, we have Tifa and Javinci. So if it's an international artist, so we're flying in Tifa. So you would have to pay for not just the fee to book the artist, but also you know their rider, um, airfare, and also accommodation. And then, of course, your venue, wherever you're having these events. Uh, there are four main revenue streams when you're having an event, um, which will be your ticket sales, either pre-sale or gate. Um, your bar management, your bar, um, that's where you can also make money, sponsorship, and also four, which is really untapped when I look overall on the industry when you compare to North America or Europe, is merchandise. Um, and if you create brands that connect with the consumer, not just you're keeping a party and you're just posting flyers, but if you find ways that you can connect with your consumers, through emotionally connect with your consumers, you can make serious um, you know, revenue from um, merchandise, be it caps, shirts. Um, for one of our events having this summer, Soka Forever, we're doing shorts as well, along with bikinis for the ladies. So you know, that's definitely huge opportunities um, for players in the market. And my different channels in which I play in, traditional media, yes, even though we shift um, our marketing spend, we still um, do really good business in terms of traditional media, digital media, um, and website, and below the line marketing. And in closing, um, I just want to mention just a few of my entrepreneurial principles that drive me um, in this industry. One is creativity. So when I'm looking to create, uh, I'm always looking to create something new, new experience, offer something different that's not in the market. So like, for example, Strictly 2K at the time, when my business partner, ZJ Chrome, approached me about saying, you know, I believe, you know, you have a plethora of 90s event. There's an opportunity to offer something new. You know, we quickly put together the team and um, we executed the event. Many said, no, where are you going with that? You know, 90s is what's current. That's what's happening. Um, but we were... Um, we were creative enough to say, you know, we're offering something new. Um, and since then, you've have, you have a bunch of 2000s events, even the 90s events have now morphed into 90s versus 2000s. Um, but Strictly 2K, um, humbly speaking, is the number one throwback party in Jamaica. You know, as they say, often duplicated but never replicated. <laughs> um, and Afro Soka Jam, one of the events I'm really proud to have, um, where it's very different in the market. You know, many persons kept saying, you know, why Afrobeats party can't work at Jamaica because, you know, Jamaicans only know two or three Afrobeats songs and, and that's really it. And right now, you know, that's one of the top monthly series in Jamaica uh, in terms of the numbers and it's just a beautiful thing to see, you know, people coming in to experience the culture, um, connecting in a diaspora so sort of way. Um, the next one is persistence and determination. And I'd like to use the story of Barcode. Now, Barcode is one of the f my first events that I had. Um, we started it in 2018, huge, so immediate success. Um, we had three staging of immediate success. By the fourth staging, it rained out. The fifth staging, it rained out. The sixth staging, um, it was the 2010 state of emergency, it got canceled. And I remember after the second um, rain out, uh, a friend of mine, um, Uncle Sa well, sorry, Minister Samuda, um, then Uncle Sam, um, he, then he was in the entertainment industry. Then he jokingly said, boy, Virgin, you always have some good idea, but they just salt. Um, you know, but I persisted. You know, I could have given up after the second event was rained or I could have given up after the state of emergency. Um, and I was facing financial loss after loss after loss. Um, you know, and I was a student at UAE, you know, I had to fend for myself, find a nine to five and pay my bills and so forth. But for me, 
um, persistence and determination are part of my DNA. And in order for you to make it as an entrepreneur, you have to be determined. So there are going to be roadblocks along the way. There are going to be things that are going to stop you along the way. But you have to have that belief in yourself that you can do it and you will do it. Um, and then the second point is self-belief. And I would like to call that self-belief the spirit of, of Joan Duncan. Because if we are familiar with the story of Joan Duncan, she started her entrepreneurial journey in her 50s. I mean, you would like to think that in your 50s you're thinking about retirement, you know, where you're going on, which cruise you're going next. Um, but she brought something innovative to the market. And that many persons told her, you know, where, where you go with this? You know, and she believed in herself and she persevered. And we see the legacy of Joan Duncan here today. So for myself, when I, as I mentioned earlier, the brands um, Afro Soka Jam and, and Strictly 2K, um, if I had listened to those persons, I would have never had those brands. They would never be a Strictly 2K. They would never be an Afro, so Afro Soka Jam. Um, or, you know, where, or standing here today speaking to you. Um, but I believed in myself and I believe in, in the ideas that I have. Not many persons will share your vision. You have to have that passion for what, you, what you're doing. And you have to have that innate self-belief that, you know, what you're doing makes sense. And you have to see it through. Um, the, so the next point is, and the last one is value creation. Um, so for me, I consistently seek to create value for my target audience. I want to ensure that one, my events are safe. Safety is very important. I want to ensure too that my patrons are comfortable. So it's not just taking that dollar from that patron, say, yo, I sell you a ticket, but you're selling an experience. So the event management process starts from the, the parking. You want to ensure you have enough security in the parking. You want to ensure that the process in which when they enter the gate is a smooth process. Because immediately if they're in long lines or the experience is already, they're already entering the event vex. You know, and it takes a longer time for them to enjoy themselves. And you want to ensure that if you promise in that, okay, it's a drink inclusive event, or even if it's a cash bar, ensure you have adequate bar staff or you have adequate bar so that the experience for the patron is good. So, um, so that's the other part. And then inclusive. Jamaica is changing. The world is changing. People want different and new experience. Um, yes, what may be trending now is chapa 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 or whatever, but there's so many other things out there. There's so many aspects of our culture that we can tap into. As I mentioned earlier, we are the cultural mecca of the world. You know, a lot of time when these international artists, when things aren't going well for them, they tap into dancehall. They remix our, our songs from the 2000s or from the 90s. So we have so much that we can tap into. Um, so try to so think along those lines and try to be inclusive of the different persons who are in Jamaica. And, and lastly, exciting. Um, you know, always go for how can I offer a new experience, something exciting for patrons that they're going to come and say, I can't wait until the next time. That's why an event like a Strictly 2K, you know, we're celebrating our seventh year this year. Um, and an Afro Soka Jam, this is our seventh staging, you know, for a monthly series each month. We're wondering how comes persons coming each time, you know, Ahsoka Forever, etc. That's why not just myself, but other players who are doing it in a large way in this business, they consistently to do it that way because for us, it's not just taking a dollar from a patron, but it's consistently delivering a great experience. All right, so I just want to say, Thank you so much uh, for inviting and thank you so much for listening. Um, these are my principles um, that I use in my entrepreneur journey, journey. And I encourage everyone out there uh, to believe in yourself, work hard, um, have some structure in place, register your business, um, go about doing business in the right way. And feel free to reach out. You can reach out to me on any of my social media platform because that's also something I believe in. When I got started, the veterans at the time who were there, they helped me along the way, and I'm grateful to be here today. So anybody who, any assistance at all, please feel free to shoot me a message. Thank you. Yeah, all right. So this is where we talk about a couple of the things you mentioned in your presentation. I, I want to zero in on the issue of the entertainment calendar. Before you started ideating, the entertainment calendar was crammed. I mean, I, I can imagine many people say, it doesn't make sense to add something else because the entertainment calendar is very well served. 
what determined you getting an idea, testing that idea, and saying, yes, this is a winner? What, what, win, what, what goes into that process to put something new to the market? Yeah, um, I think it pretty much starts with um, looking at what is their space for something. So it's looking to say, okay, um, I notice this, let's say, for example, the soca market. Um, it's pretty much dominated by events that are whether cooler fits and so forth. And patrons are asking for a pure soca event, so to speak. You know, uh, so one of our events, Soca Forever. So that's when we that's how we created that event because persons were asking for, all right, yes, there's a space for soca and dance all event, mm -hmm. but we want something different. So um, it's really there. You you start the process from there to say what's a problem or what opportunity is there. And then from there now you can look on the calendar um, to say, okay, you know, which month is there an opportunity and who are my target audience are they going to this event so if you know that you know this is an event that draw a wide cross-section of persons um, you know you tend to avoid that date and go on, on a different day yeah it's funny we, we now have a, a John Duncan School of Entrepreneurship Ethics and Leadership at UTEC uh, when I went to UTEC entrepreneurship was just a course so a course has morphed into yeah. a whole school yeah. I say that to ask about risk because you looked at Wells Fargo, right. as an investment, as a banker. Right. And every year you were making progress at Wells Fargo. <laughs> so when you told those who were closest <laughs> to you that I'm leaving Wells Fargo <laughs> to go put on entertainment events, that was a huge How did, did, did you convince those who mattered most to you that they should support you on this venture, that you weren't mad? Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I know I knew what I want out of life. Um, this is something I've always been passionate about um, and I knew that there weren't many persons who are going to see the vision or believe in what I'm going to do um, but I'm someone who believes in myself and I have a plan um, and everything has been going um, according to plan and one thing I told myself was that there's no plan B mm -hmm. this is the plan it is going to work yeah yeah a, a, lo a lot of the times I find that people in business they don't approach a business from the perspective of having been a customer or a client themselves. And I, I, I think that's very important. Absolutely. You, you're inside. It's not look at events. You spoke about ticketing, access to bar. I know many people, you're waiting half an hour to, to, to pay for the drink. Then you have to wait another half hour to get the drink. The crowd is so thick. What goes into uh, ensuring that the landscape of the event that you are hosting is conducive to enjoyment, quick access to the important area that people want to come again? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. And something I always tell people is that when it comes to events, I believe it's customer service. Um, and one of my, and it's a pity I didn't mention it earlier, but one of my strongest assets um, to, to my success is I have a strong team. Mm -hmm. I have a very strong business partner. So when I look on, for example, um, a Strictly 2K, Gabby, Mark, Chrome and myself, we have a very strong team and capable. So I know my job is to handle the marketing, communication and sponsorship to get the people there and to get the funding. And I have my business partner who is more than capable to handle the bar to ensure that because we will have number of meetings leading up to say, OK, this is what we want the bar experience to be. This is what the gate experience is to be. So even like the performances, this is the call time for TIFA. We want to ensure we have someone that works that will be assisting um, Gabby to ensure that you know, the rider for the respective artists is, is done properly, um, the gate management and everything. So I, I believe it really comes down to having a strong team and being structured and really just being detail oriented. Yeah, and because you're successful, I know that you're not one of those who have regular patrons here, VIP here, and have a sheet separating them and have me paying an exorbitant sum for <laughs> VIP. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't happen. Anyway, you're watching the 10th annual Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture or guest lecturer, Ibrahim IB Conte, CEO of IB Enterprises. When we return from the break, our audience will get a chance to interact with IB on this very interesting topic. So much to cover, so little time. Break time.
Dermosol was first conceptualized a few years ago while I was volunteering at the hospital and hope break started and baby started dying. I vowed to find a solution to help save lives. Zermosol is a smart, easy to use add-on device that can be added to almost any door handle or rail. We actually use a safe type of UV light to kill both bacteria and viruses that are harmful. The University of Technology Jamaica has assisted Zermosol immensely. Baroness Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, has also endorsed Zermosol to 54 Commonwealth membering countries. We have also been getting calls from other countries. The University of Technology Jamaica should definitely be the university of choice and is willing to see all its students succeed. The University of Technology Jamaica, the birthplace of greatness. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. The Shakers, the people making a difference, who never shy away from a challenge, who are never afraid to dirty their hands, to jump in and get things done, who are never afraid to fail. IB Contest CEO of IB Enterprises, he's, well, he spoke on entrepreneurship in the entertainment industry in Jamaica. I know our audience is anxious to pose questions to him. We're pressed up against the clock, so let's keep the questions snappy, and IB will be happy to answer the questions. All right, let's go. Who's first? Okay. Thanks, George. Eric O'Donnell is here, a lecturer at the University of Technology, Jamaica. Abby, I would first like to say congratulations. You have done well for yourself despite the challenges as an entrepreneur myself. Um, policies, I believe, are very important because that's where we will really see changes. So my question is, uh, based on what it is that you have experienced and the strategies, what, what it is that has worked for you, what are your recommendations um, for the government? Because you spoke about systems. What are your recommendations for the government? Those are very good questions. Um, I would say definitely, um, one, we need uh, entertainment zones. Um, ever since um, 20, roughly, I think like 2013, 2014, we've been hearing about entertainment zones. They're badly needed. Um, we can't have all these major festivals across Europe, Rotterdam, Splash, and all of them, and we don't have any major entertainment um, venue in Jamaica. Um, two, if we're going to have a, a, a more structured system in place in terms of where fees um, are concerned. And we saw recently where a councillor was asking to introduce a fee um, where um, spirits license is concerned for events versus just bars. Um, so we believe that you know the industry would not be able would not survive if there's going to be an introduction of, a, of another fee. Um, and, and as well, you know just making it easier to access grants. Um, so part of you know being here today, um, I did you know my research to finding out you know how you can get the various grants and so forth, um, and sharing that information with like different person, different group, and it was like news to many persons. So I would say you know in terms of engaging the industry, I know during the sh um, the shutdown of the pandemic, we had consultations going on, um, we had different conversations going on, but ever since we reopened, that has basically died. Um, well, I would say, you know, definitely we can start by engaging the industry and having a oversight body, so to speak, that can do that, represent um, the industry. Thank you for that. Another question from the audience? All right. Afternoon, everybody. Mm -hmm. My name is Tavoy Barrett. I'm the immediate past president of the UTEC Students' Union. A uh, great presentation, sir, and a, a beautiful picture of what the challenges, opportunities that exist within the entertainment landscape. So you've made mention of technology and innovation, particularly as it relates to the value chain and entertainment business. So my question is, what are the where are the spaces that UTEC and more specifically JD Seal can support um, not only the students who are interested in getting into the entertainment value chain, but the value chain itself and those who are already in the entertainment business space? You have, you have a minute and a half to answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are the spaces? 
Um, I would say uh, if, so like lectures such as these are, are really important um, because one, I got to find out a lot about the work that um, JD Seal is doing um, and how entrepreneurs can, you know, tap into, you know, where that is concerned. So even in terms of having an incubator for um, your technology-based business, I believe that's really, really good. And if more persons knew about it that have, you know, that sort of business that they can have that, that sort of support, um, I think that will definitely go a far way. I think it's more reaching out to um, people in the industry. Um, I, I guess bringing more awareness to what you guys, what JD Seal is doing, um, that will definitely um, help where that is concerned. Uh, is there time to squeeze one quick one in? Another quick one? No, there's not. My director says there's not, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Well, a very good lecture this one was. Exciting, yes, I was. And there's so much more to talk about. Time, of course, or enemy as we close. Another very interesting lecture. I take the opportunity to thank those who made it possible. Thanks to the Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership at the University of Technology, Jamaica, JMMB, Joan Duncan Foundation. And, of course, our guest lecturer, Ibrahim Ibi Conte, CEO of IB Enterprises. My name is George Davis. Thank you for watching. We look, for, well, we look forward to seeing you again next year. Do enjoy the rest of the afternoon.